Hey there and welcome to a new video on a Sunday about Brexit. If you want to know more about the recent developments of Brexit and would like to hear an outside view from Germany about it, then you are at the right video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will always be up to date about my videos. But now, let's start with the video. Boris Johnson repeatedly stated that the chance for a no deal would be a million to one. This Monday, the EU seems to have felt uh, to be forced to finally answer on the part that Johnson said he always wants to have a new deal. And this Monday, the EU said the deal is negotiated and there won't be more negotiations about another deal. Um, the only thing that can happen is new negotiations about the political declarations that is about the future relationship between the EU and the UK which wouldn't be so bad because if the faster you can get the future relations um, the sooner you are out of the path in the middle after the Brexit but right after this um, Michael Gove said it's uh, that he's sorry that the EU refuses to negotiate. I mean, the US negotiated for two years. The result was a withdrawal agreement, which uh, the current Prime Minister of that time, Theresa May, agreed to, because she was part of these negotiations in the end. And uh, so there were two years of negotiations, so you can't say the EU doesn't want to negotiate at all. But um, there, there might be a time when it's over and uh, that's what it is. And on the other hand, the um, conditions for negotiations right now made up by Boris Johnson are quite, let's say, serious. And uh, the Irish Prime Minister, um, Baratka, already said that uh, they would be open for negotiations, meaning probably the, the political declaration only, but um, he said we can't have any negotiations if there are these conditions given by, by Boris Johnson's for negotiations because he wants um, the other heads of state or heads of governments to say that they will accept what he wants before he even negotiates with them. That's not negotiations. At the same time, there was a new opinion poll about regarding Scotland which said that the majority in Scotland is now pro-independence. We know the last referendum in Scotland, a uh, majority, not a huge one, but still a majority voted for remaining in the UK. And uh, with the development of Brexit, there seem to be some changes. And now this poll says uh, that the majority in Scotland now wants independence. So it's getting more and more dangerous in this way too. I am uh, stating this, of course, because some comments made on my last video. Um, it would only be a small minority in Scotland, for example. Um, but now, this is not polls from Germany, these are polls made in Scotland, um, which state that the majority of, of Scottish people now wants independence, because they believe Britain will go out of the EU in the first place, and second, even with a no deal. And there was uh, later on something interesting. After the FDF um, published a survey that there will be food sh shortages in case of a no deal um, and put up a little bit more pressure with the survey on the, on the government, I guess, um, Boris Johnson made a Facebook Live video. He talked about what his government is doing at the moment and he talked about some more of his plans, but in a situation like this, I mean, don't forget the 31st of October is not that far away anymore. He only mentioned a no deal in one sentence in between in the whole video. And he never talked about negotiations. Not a single time in his live video. So, when the Prime Minister is talking about his work, he's currently doing preparing not only for better society and stuff like this, which is all, 
all great stuff which which one can hear there um, but with a, with a Brexit at hand only to mention a no deal prep and there are only the preparations and the new money and uh, not a single word about negotiations with the other EU leaders I was I was quite stunned when I saw that I would have expected a little bit more information and um, Anyway, I, I, I would really like a little bit more of detail from, from the British government about their plans towards the EU now. What we know now is um, there are 2.1 billion more um, from, the, from the Chancellor for the No Deal preparations, um, which uh, a part of it is needed for more personnel, for um, customs and, and stuff like that. Um, and that's because if there's no deal and you go out with uh, WTO terms, there will be tariffs and tariffs have to be checked obviously, not only in the UK but uh, in the EU as well. And the UK needs people to protect their borders, needs people to check the tariffs because um, there will be tariffs except Britain will be a very free country because um, I heard some speculations about um, giving the EU zero tariff, tariffs, but the, the WTO rules say if you give anyone zero tariffs without a trade deal, you have to give it to anyone. And so if you give the EU zero tariffs, you have to give China zero tariffs, you have to give um, the rest of the world zero tariffs. And I don't think that is the intention of the British government, but that's just my opinion. Um, and that's because um, I, I saw a lot of um, news and a lot of videos about GET24 um, and most of you probably will remember um, the interview with Boris, Boris Johnson uh, on British TV about that, about uh, paragraph 5b, c um, and everybody I hear from, from the UK now says um, um, okay, sorry, every journalist I hear from the UK saying that GET24 is, is very unlikely because um, of course the whole WTO members would, would have to agree with that and I, I can't imagine how that would work. Um, regarding these preparations, the EU says they have prepared, they are prepared. Um, we heard other numbers recently that the EU might lose uh, 1.2 million jobs um, in case of a no deal Brexit and Britain would lose uh, half a million jobs and people say the EU would be hit harder well the, the 1.2 millions are the whole EU all 27 other countries and five, 500,000 half a million is just the UK if you look at the percentages of uh, 500,000 to 60 million inhabitants and uh, 1.2 million to the rest of the EU, the, it's, it's a far higher percentage and already there um, would be a lot of damage from my uh, point of view. And regarding the preparations, I know the EU is exporting and especially Germany is exporting um, to the UK as well, but um, especially dairy and, and lamb for example are being exported from the UK into the EU and we just had the tariffs there and as far as I learned now on WTO terms there would be tariffs of 35% on, on dairy products for the UK farmers and UK companies exporting to the EU and even 40% of tariffs on, on lamb who in Europe would eat UK lamb when, when it gets 40% uh, more expensive we have very cheap alternatives in the EU and th that might be uh, bringing it to a real d delicacy. <sighs> you can see what, what, why I see it as a very tough point from an from outside view um, to deal with that and, and deal with some ways of, of thinking of some politicians. Um, because if you're not involved, you, you would say, guys, be reasonable. Why would you do this to your people? But it um, even goes on there also it's the point of Northern Ireland you know if the UK leaves the EU without a deal and without the backstop 
which uh, many people in the UK obviously are not very fond of. But then you will have a hard border between Northern Ireland and uh, Ireland. And I was quite young at the time when, before the Good uh, Friday Agreement and when, when the real um, fights and the real terrorism was in, uh, regarding Northern Ireland. But I can't imagine what that would mean for this. You finally achieved a solution and then you separate Ireland and Northern Ireland even farther from each other again. Because I hear a lot of uh, people talking about technical solutions, but no one um, explained can they be used immediately. I heard the opposite, by the way. Um, how is it supposed to work? Um, and so I, I don't believe there will be a wall or a high fence or whatever, but I'm quite sure there must be checks of some kind because Ireland will be bound to its treaties with the EU. They will have to protect the EU border. And so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned between um, the two, cho two choices, either Ireland not protecting the EU border on that part, or renewed violence. So forgive me if uh, I insult somebody with this, but uh, it is an outside view where, where you get the stuff from the news and um, never experienced in some, something like this. I visited Cranwell once, um, as a, as a German cadet when, when uh, the threat was not that low as it is today and um, they suggested not to go out in uniform and stuff like this and I can from, from this small experience imagine uh, what it must be like to have a situation like this again and so um, I'm really concerned about that part. But there's still time, I hear <laughs> a lot of stuff talking about um, um, votes of, uh, what's the English term for that, in, in, uh, in no confidence, <coughs> um, but um, there are the other points there, they say even if there's a vote on no confidence on, on 3rd of September, um, there are time limits um, for, for things where uh, you have to wait 14 days or something like this and then within uh, if, if uh, Boris Johnson can, can uh, form a new government that has confidence and then um, you have another 25 days to um, have an election or something like this and uh, today in a German newspaper I read that he can just put the elections after the 31st of October and 25 days before that the uh, parliament has to be um, resolved and uh, there will be no parliament in the time of the 31st of October and so there's quite a lot of um, curiousness left there's quite a lot of excitement to come I guess and uh, I will keep you informed about what we're hearing here what is the development I can give you from, from uh, British sources I get and uh, We'll see how this will end. I wish the best for you guys. Um, and then on this point, really thank you to all my British viewers. And uh, nice it is to my uh, viewers from the ne Netherlands, uh, which are also quite in interested in Brexit, as I have learned through my video. Um, in the future, I will not only um, make Brexit videos in English because I learned that a lot of people from, from other countries are watching um, already. So I will make another um, series soon that will be German politics explained. So if you're interested in um, German politics, about the structures, how, how the, um, it's, it's working, because it is quite different from, from, uh, Brit from the British system. Um, I hope you will enjoy that too. And um, for now, I just want to say, I hope you um, understood what I tried to say. English is not my native language, I'm a native German speaker, so uh, please forgive all the mistakes I made on the way. 
and uh, in the future you will see in every thumbnail for the videos if it is in English or in German so you know um, from seeing the th thumbnails is it in your language or not so for now I thank you for watching have a nice weekend or the rest of it and I hope to see you next week bye bye